Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to part 2 of our national invoicing solution workshop. In this workshop we're gonna showcase how to access and use the compliance and enablement toolbox and SDK. This is an important step in the journey of being uh, phase 2 compliant with the invoicing. Uh, this is an optional step however we urge you, urge you to use this tool to make sure that whatever invoices that you're generating for your solution is compliant with Zatka standard. So to access the SDK, you need to navigate to sandbox.zadka.gov.sa and log in using your email. You're going to present it, be presented with four tabs. The first tab is about the developer portal frequently asked questions. We keep populating this question depending on the uh, most frequent question that we, we receive from our developers. The second part, which is the compliance and enablement toolbox and SDK. This will be our topic today. Also today, we're going to quickly touch upon the web-based validator for non-technical users and how to use it to validate uh, the XML files uh, using the web. And then finally, you'll be able to access the API integration sandbox, which we'll be covering in a different session. So to access the SDK, basically, you need to click on, click on this tab. In the first tab, you will be able to download the user manual and the SDK itself. We're going to have access to a support page. We'll uh, explain to you how to install uh, the SDK and what are the prerequisites for that. And then you'll also have access to all documentation related to the technical specifications. So we'll have the XML implementation standards, the security implementation standard, and the data dictionary standards as well. And then finally, we'll have access to the version history of all the SDKs. Each version will include what, what change in that version along with uh, a direct link to access the SDK. So once you download the SDK, you're going to unzip the file and you'll be presented with, the certain, with this uh, structure. Uh, basically, for Windows, you're going to need to run the install.bat file. And for uh, Linux and Mac, you're going to need to run the install.sh file. One of the most important files we have here is the readme file, which is in, in document, Word document and PDF format. So in that file, you will have all the details that you need for uh, using the SDK. So to verify that you have uh, installed the SDK correctly, what you need to do is through command line, you need to run the Fatura-help uh, to, uh, to see all the commands supported by the SDK. Now, the SDK can be used in two uh, modes. The first one is using the command line, as we we're going to see today. The other one is to import the libraries that we have with the SDK and integrating it with your uh, IDE for uh, .NET, uh, .NET uh, development environment or Java development environment. So on the readme file, we're going to have all the uh, commands that you can run uh, in the SDK and all, along with all the options. Also, you're going to have some examples of how to run these commands. So let's go through them. Uh, the f first command that you can run, which is the certificate signing request, the CSR. Before you run this command, you need to uh, configure the properties file that comes with the SDK to be specific to your organization. So there are certain fields that need to be populated. I'm going to have a look at that in the uh, folder structure shortly. Uh, so basically, you need to provide some information about the, uh, the device and the organization that is going to be used to sign uh, or register the device in, uh, in Zatka. Of course, we have uh, provided some example in, in the SDK. Once you have uh, populated the configuration file, you need to run the command fatura-csr-csrconfig and pass it the file path. And then you're going to need to pass it the private key with the file path. And then finally, you need to pass it the uh, where you want the, the file to be generated. Uh, the next command, which is to generate the invoice hash, which is one of the requirements for phase two. Uh, basically, what you need to do is uh, run the command uh, uh, fatura dash sign dash invoice to uh, and pass it the file name and then uh, the output file which is the signed invoice and the file name where you want it. Another uh, command that we have which is to generate a JSON format of the uh, of the uh, of the API request. So basically you run the command fatura dash invoice and then pass it the file name and then the output file name uh, and then the uh, the API request file name as well. This will generate the file in an adjacent format, which is used in the uh, integration later on. Another important command that we have, which is generating the QR code. As you know, part of the requirement uh, for e-invoicing is to generate a QR code for the simplified invoices. And here we provided uh, a, 
a sample and a command to, to showcase how this QR code can be generated. Basically, you run the command fatura-qr-invoice and then pass it the file name. The output of that was going to be the actual QR code that you can use to print the QR code on the invoice. Another important command, which is the validate invoice. This will validate the XML that you're passing and get the result whether it's successful or failed. And if it fails, it's going to show exactly where it failed. So basically, you run the command fatura-validate-invoice and pass it the file name to be uh, validated against. This is how to generate the invoice hash, fatura dash generate hash and then invoice and then the file name. And then here we have some commands regarding adding the private key and the certificate along with some uh, frequently asked questions. Now let's have a look at the SDK and run sample command. So we're going to run uh, a validate command and then a, a, a QR code generation command. So if we pick this command, so basically you're going to run the command line. Uh, and then you're going to uh, navigate to, uh, I'm going to use the samples that we are providing with the SDK. So if you go to um, data samples, you're going to find various samples. So I'm going to use the standard invoice. So if you go to this path, and then if you run the command fatura dash validate dash invoice and then pass it the standard invoice XML. So in this example, we have provided a valid XML file. You're going to see that it passed all the validation successfully. Now in the same folder, we have also provided a, a, a wrong XML with or an XML with an error. So we're going to showcase how this error will be presented in the uh, command line as well. So if we pass it the same command, but with the error XML, so we're going to see that it has passed the first validation with the XSD. However, it failed in the EN validation. And the result of that is that uh, the message is that it has failed in the business rule uh, dash 10, which is an invoice shall contain the buyer postal address. So this was one of the requirements. However, it wasn't populated in the XML. Now, another command that we can run, which is the validate QR code, which is a very important command, uh, or generate QR code. So if you run Fatura, uh, dash QR and then pass it the invoice which is the same invoice that we can use so the QR code will be generated for you and this is the final result of the QR code of course it passes multiple stages this is the final stage of the QR code you can use this QR code to uh, be used in the XML or you can use it for printing the QR code on the uh, human readable format so these are a few examples of how to use the SDK. I would urge you to go through the readme file uh, carefully and read all the commands and see how they are used. Now, we're going to use the same samples that we have seen in the web validator. So if you go back to the website, you go to the developer portal, there is a section for web-based validator. Uh, basically here, what you can do is that you can drag and drop or you can upload the XMLs and see uh, if they are valid or not. So let's use the same examples that we have used for the command line. So I'm going to pass the same standard XML format, uh, XML file. And if we do that, you can see that it is successful.